Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I so bless the Lord for the kind of wisdom and revelation he is bringing to us. God is great and I thank him for it. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for your daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Glory. Praise God. Listen, receive a miracle today. Open your heart and just receive a miracle today. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't ever think that God will abandon you. Receive your miracle today in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been talking about teach us to pray and and i'll share something with you yesterday so so deep i was meditating on on on, on this and i there's so much wisdom available in god but god's children are not taking advantage of it because most times we take things for granted the power of fasting I, uh, I can show you examples upon examples in scripture where people fasted and prayed and God showed up you see just like I was telling you yesterday you know we were talking about the different kind of prayers to pray on how to approach different situations so we dealt on monday we dealt with jonah and how he was in a death situation and he looked for something to hope for reminded god of a covenant and his life was spared okay there are things that you know ah may god help us in our generation our generation is so full of knowledge but lack understanding. Yeah. So when you see arguments, people argue. I was watching respectable ministers, and I still respect them, We're talking about how God does not make covenants with us. That he only made covenants with Jesus. And now I understand when you're talking about the covenant of salvation. Okay. But when you generalize it and say God does not make covenant with us, people get the wrong understanding of what you're saying. Does God make, co make, make covenant with individuals? Yes, he does. Come on, talk to me. You are in relationship with God. And Jesus is not the mediator. In that relationship. I am. Oh, no, no, the Bible says we have Jesus as our mediator. You don't even understand the scriptures. You pick words and you use those words to rule a line. Jesus himself said in John chapter 16, he said, On that day, you will ask in my name and I will not say that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you. What do you understand from that? It, it tells you that we're not praying to Jesus and Jesus is not saying, hmm, don't worry, I know how to bring up this up with the Father. Just relax, I've heard you. And then Jesus now goes to the Father and says, Father, um, Atubo, you know, that's our son, Atubo. He needs something. You know, I, actually, I promised him, so, in, and I promised him in your name, so, you know, it would be right for us to do it. Let's not be as though we are failing. And God will not say, hmm, Jesus, you have come again, oh. But you know what can I refuse you now? Take. You know the same idea people have when they, a lot of Catholics do this thing. The same idea people have when they pray to Mary. Okay. Now, now from my own understanding, I don't know how true it is. I can't say I've studied this in depth. So don't, if you think I'm, I'm saying rubbish, understand where I'm coming from. From my little understanding, I, I, I understand because I've spoken to a few people they may not have the accurate knowledge i have to put this caveat they said someone actually told me that the idea is because mary jesus is too busy 
you know, attending to the whole world. So a, a, a lesser busy person, they can contact his Mary. You know, so they say, oh, if and, and Jesus cannot refuse Mary. I don't know how many of you have heard that story before. Jesus cannot refuse Mary. If she asks him anything, he will give it to her. Now they said the same way at that wedding, you know, she went to him and said, wine has finished. And Jesus said, what, what do you want me to do? Please leave me. My time has not yet come. But then she went behind and told the servants, go to him. Anything he tells you to do, do. And, and, and they felt Jesus was compelled by Mary to do that miracle of turning water into wine. Now, now that's what people feel. They felt Mary compelled Jesus. So because he could not refuse her, even though his time had not yet come, he had to do something about it. But that's not true. You see, that's why I say there's a lot of knowledge, but little understanding. What happened? It was their family wedding. One of Jesus' sisters was getting married and Jesus was the firstborn. So when the wine finished, they came to Jesus. Normal, I mean, first go to the first son. Bros, wine has finished. So what do you want me to do? Well, I'm just telling you that wine has finished. Like I say, in my mind, I can picture, you know, Jesus being who he, he was. So let's buy 20 barrels of wine. Why are we buying 20 barrels of wine? Please, you know, now these are traditional things, so you have to provide them, okay? But, but you know how even till this day, you, you can't tell me, you know, I remember when I was getting married to my wife, and you know how they give you least, and, and thank God my wife's parents were, uh, were believers, but then now you're dealing with a larger community. You know? So even though the parents are pastors, except the, the father, can stand his ground and insist for that. They will give you all the alcohols and everything to bring. And then you begin to negotiate, okay, um, we can't travel with all these things. Can we give the financial, um, convert it to money and give it? Oh, okay, 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 okay. But then you have to pay for all those things. Now imagine bringing, the, they they forcing you to bring down all those things. You you want to fight them and, and, and cut a lot of things off that list. So I imagine Jesus like, oh, we need to buy 20 barrels of, of wine. And, and Jesus like, please, you know, ah, so what do we do? I don't know. Just, just give what's available. And then when the wine finishes, more like, but I told you so. You know, you, we, we, you know, especially when it comes to marriage, you see a lot of things. You see a lot of things. Don't use that to judge people. Praise <laughs> God. Don't use that to judge people. Because sometimes, because yeah, you know, some Christians, you know, can you imagine the kind of music they were playing in that, that brother's wedding, that sister's wedding? Now you know how these things work. Sometimes it's not as though the person says, I want this music, I want... Now there are people who are well detailed that will tell you, get me this kind of DJ, get me this kind of music band, get, play me this kind of songs. In fact, these are the list of my songs. Or some will even say, Give me the list of songs you're going to play. And then they will do it. I think that's what we did in our own wedding. They're going to give you the list of songs. And then you, okay. Now, some people are that detailed. Now, others just leave it out to other people. Like, look, you know what? Please handle this for me. You handle this. So those ones were like, let's just get to DJ. And they will discuss those details. And DJ comes to the party and surprises everybody. <laughs> wondering. But then it's your day. You, you can't. You don't have time to start repairing things. So what kind of song? What kind of DJ did you get for me? I don't know. I've told him to play Christian songs. He said he doesn't have any Christian songs. That, uh, the, the only kind of songs he has, there are songs that uh, love songs. Uh, in the, uh, so, so what do you want to do? No music? I know some of you say, eh, it's better there's no music. All of us will start and give, will do mouth worship. But then some other person will say, like, see man, it's my day. I can't let anything spoil my day. I'm going to enjoy myself. You understand what I'm saying? Now, whether the one who says, let's do praise and worship, or the one who decided to dance to whatever music they play, don't judge anyone, okay? Don't judge anyone, because God is not going to sit down there and say, angels, go, see the kind of music they are playing, this is my daughter's wedding. Ah, angels, are you seeing? So what kind of marriage will this marriage be? Don't judge people by those kind of things. It happens. Praise God. So in this case, now I'm talking about Jesus. 
in this case, Jesus, Mary went to mother, the mother of Jesus went to him and said, wine is over, wine is finished. So what do you want me to do now? Well, that's your business. That's actually what she said to him. That's your business. You've got to fix this. And then she went over to the house, go meet him. Anything he tells you to do, do. Was well, she expecting him to do a miracle? The kind of miracle I think she was expecting him to do is to produce the money to quickly buy wine. That's what she was expecting. And Jesus being who he was, never stranded. He doesn't have to be carrying money around. Feel the water pot. You know the story. He turned water into wine and people drank. Now I'm saying that to say it was not because he respected his mother. So he had to do it. So people now have this idea that if we can pray to Mary, Mary will talk to Jesus. Jesus cannot refuse Mary. So how do you even know that Mary has heard you now? <laughs> it's good. How do you know? Imagine all the Catholics in the world praying to one Mary. Oh, I'm sure by now she should have shut her windows if there's any such thing like that. So you guys, man, I've tried over all these years. I don't have any other work to, to be listening to your prayer and then running to Jesus and telling him. Now, mind you, even Mary does not see Jesus in heaven. I mean, in paradise, she doesn't see Jesus. Not like Jesus said, oh, my mommy, my mommy, my mommy. No. Even she recognizes him as Lord. I get to answer. She doesn't have special access to him. <laughs> that shouldn't shock you. <laughs> now that's because Jesus, there's no Jesus in heaven. Like there's no one you go to and say, let me take you to Jesus. Need someone I'll lead you. And say, see Jesus sitting over right there. Let's go and meet him. No, sir. In heaven, I've told you that before. In heaven, Jesus shows up when he wants to show up. Why? Because he is the word of God. He is the word of God. So don't imagine there is one throne in heaven that you now go when you enter. This is the throne. You now enter and now see all the protocols on the throne. And you now see one sitting on the throne. That's, that's Jesus. Wow. Bros. J. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Hey, I, I came to greet you. <laughs> no, sir. He is the word of God. He dwells in the Father. The throne of God is not one chair. Like you have... In your mind, a king's throne on the earth. Nah. <laughs> Praise God. Nothing like that. So when does Jesus show? Do people see Jesus? Yes, they do. But he, the same thing he did when he, when he rose from the dead here on earth. Okay, When he rose from the dead, people didn't see him at will. No. He, he, he reveals himself when he wants to reveal himself. That's who he is. And that's how he is in heaven also. Please understand this. So don't think Mary have more access to him. No, no, she doesn't. All right, so I showed you what Esther did. And she fasted and prayed with all the Jews fasting and praying three days. And she was able to secure the lives of every Jew. She was able to change the law, not, not change the law per se, but the king had, because the king couldn't change the law. So he had to give another law to counter that law. You understand what that means? Now she saved her people. Now, it's the same way you can bring development to your community. It's the same way you can. Now you have access to, and I was explaining that to you, have access to such people. Don't treat them like you people you know. You don't do that. You know, sometimes people make the same mistakes uh, you, because you're close to a pastor. You know how people think, hey, that pastor is my friend. So you just think when something happens, ah, pastor, come and pray for me. See, your relationship, because of how you have related with that person, now he's anointed, you know he's anointed, but you've gone across the anointing to be made friends with that person. Now, the truth is this, if you don't manage your relationship very well with, with such people, uh, you, you may get into trouble. It's like Jesus when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, the Bible lets us understand that the family of um, Lazarus and Jesus, they were very close. 
So Jesus visits them, he spends time with them. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. Can you remember one time Jesus went, was visiting and um, Martha complained about Mary. He said, this is Mary, she can't help me in the kitchen. She's just sitting down and listening to Jesus, listening to Jesus. See, she brought that complaint like, Martha, Mary, you're supposed to be helping me in this kitchen. Come and help me. Now, Jesus was very close to them. He, they were friends, okay? Now, when, when Lazarus died, they sent a message to Jesus. Now, why didn't Jesus go immediately? Because if he had gone immediately, he would have been going in the flesh. I, I want you to understand something. Your friend Lazarus is very, very sick. Ah, I'm coming. That's I'm coming. He heard by the hearing of the ear. If he responds to that, he'll be acting in the flesh. And he may even get there and tell Lazarus, Bele, it's okay, don't worry. And Lazarus would have still died. Now, if Lazarus had died in that situation, it would have been difficult. So, when Jesus had the condition Lazarus was in, he needed to act as a, please understand when I say, a man of God. Father, what do you want me to do? Lazarus. He didn't relate with him as his friend. The message they sent was, Lazarus, your friend. But he knew if I'm going to help him, I can't help him as a friend. I have to help him as the anointed one. So, Father, what do I do? Lazarus. And the Lord says, do nothing until I tell you what to do. Mm. Okay. And then he died. He didn't go. And then one day he says, guys, let's go to Bapni. I want to see Lazarus. Mm. Ah, that journey. You know, those people, they don't like you. That's what the disciples were trying to tell you. You know, they don't like you in that place. Even though he had his friends there, the, the city, they don't like him. Because if he goes there, he will have to preach. Somehow, he will have to preach. And the people don't like him. So, like, we're going there again. You know, they don't like you. He said, no, 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 this is not about them. Lazarus is sleeping. And I want us to go and wake him up. Now, he's making the matter worse. This is your friendship with this Lazarus. It has reached this point that so you have to travel to go and wake somebody up from sleep. I'm sure it's Mary or Martha that have called him. <laughs> I'm sure it's Martha. I'm sure it's Martha. They want to see him. They're just using Lazarus. Nah, all kinds of thoughts were going through the minds of the disciples. Until Jesus finally said, Lazarus is dead. But I am glad for your sakes that I was not dead. Because now you are going to see the glory of God. And then they followed him. Say, well, let's go and die with him now, if that's the case. They followed him. And when they got there, Martha heard that Jesus was around. And she came to meet him. What's the first thing? Say, see now, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. He's no more your friend now. He's now my brother. If you were, actually, I'm sure she must have said it in a rude manner. If you were here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, it's okay. Your brother will rise again. Say, I know. I know you're coming to comfort us and you start preaching all those sermons how on the last day you've taught us all those things. You remember they were close. On the last day everybody will rise and I know, eh, talk. And I say, no, no, no. Jesus said, no. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he's dead, he will live again. Anyone who believes in me and is alive will not die. Do you believe this? I'm sure she looked at Jesus like you've come. I don't think this is what you should be discussing during funeral. You're coming to, to be, to come to the house of the bereaved. Don't come and start preaching. She walked away. That's what Mary, Martha did. She walked away. And then Mary heard that Jesus was around. She ran and came to him and said exactly the same thing Martha said. If you were here, my brother would not have died. What was Jesus' response? Where have you laid him? You see, they said the same thing, but got different response. Martha said the same thing Jesus began to teach. 
Mary said the same thing Jesus said, where have you laid? And she got a miracle. And, and Jesus got to that tomb and the Bible says he wept. He didn't just, you know how yeah. Mm -mm. He wept. So people would have known so much that the Jews took knowledge and they said, wow. I must have loved this guy. This is Jesus that is doing all these miracles. Imagine him weeping. This is very bad. So I don't think Jesus just did. Mm -mm. I'm sure Jesus, they must have seen tears drop from his eyes. They must have seen Jesus go, wow. Why was he weeping? Was he for Lazarus? No. Actually, Jesus wept for matter. Her unbelief. You've so looked at me as a friend. You don't know me. You don't really know me. As a man of God, sometimes you come into that kind of situation. And sometimes you're almost helpless. And you have to let situations be. But thank God, why did Jesus react that way to Mary? Because she pulled something out of him. Mary will listen to Jesus and ask questions. Mary believes in Jesus. And Jesus looked at her and said, No, I've got to prove to this one that these things are true. And Lazarus came back to life. My time is up. Praise God. Yeah. Your attitude matters when you pray. Are you praying and arguing with God? Or are you praying because you believe? in him. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.